Hello, country and town. This is Pastor Todd. I want to thank you for taking up my uh, invitation to join me as I read through the Gospel of Matthew this January. Uh, it's wonderful to reflect on the Lord and focus our attention there, particularly with everything that's going on right now. Let's just focus on Jesus together. So we'll be uh, reading through Matthew chapter, um, well, actually all the chapters. Uh, speaking of that, if you're late to the party, that, that's not a problem. What we're doing is we're just reading whatever day of the month it is. If it's the 7th, read chapter 7. If it's the 8th, read chapter 8. Now, what we'll be doing with these midweek uh, videos is just trying to take a deeper dive into one of these passages, uh, you know, really just to, to, to kind of perk our interest and, and get us excited about staying uh, in, in the gospel. So please join me as we take a look now at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 begins after Jesus' baptism. His ministry is now inaugurated. And the first thing he does is head out into the wilderness for 40 days. It seems rather odd. He is praying and fasting and no doubt spending time with his Father in heaven, which doesn't seem so odd. But the number 40 should, should ring a bell in, in our mind. When was the last time or the most significant time we saw a individual or group in the Bible be out in the desert for 40 units of time? Well, of course, we think back to the, to the Exodus. God's children, um, the Israelites, they were led out of Egypt by God's strong hand and into the Promised Land. Yet, for 40 years, they wandered in the desert, and it was a time of, of testing for them. Now, God wasn't tempting them to do evil, but he was allowing them to experience some discomfort, uh, some times of doubt, in order to draw them to him, to have them focus on him, a, a time of testing. Jesus does this at the beginning of his ministry. Now, Matthew is pointing out to us, and he does this all throughout his gospel, that Jesus really is the Jewish Messiah, but he's also the fulfillment of what God has asked of the people of Israel. They were to be his people, and they were to be his light to the world around them. They never really succeeded in this, but Jesus will succeed in this. Think about some of the things that happen here. He's out in the desert for 40 days instead of 40 years for the children of Israel. There was 12 tribes of the children of Israel um, that made up uh, the, the children of Israel. Jesus chooses 12 disciples. He could have choose, chosen 14, 15, whatever, but 12 was the number. Uh, we see in the birth narratives, Jesus is called out of Egypt like the um, children of Israel and, and so forth and so on. There's many examples. Um, but it's not just that. If we go all the way back to the beginning of Scripture, way back in Genesis, um, here we have Adam and Eve, the very first human beings, and they too are tested. God allows them to be in a situation where their doubts and, and their allegiances are, are, are tested. Um, and, of course, they, they fail too. Satan appears to them and, and, and they fall. Uh, Paul, writing in Romans, will point out to us that as Adam fell and as death came to all of us through Adam, so Jesus will succeed and life can come now to all of us, eternal life, because of Jesus' success and through Jesus. So Satan tempts Jesus three times uh, and Jesus replies to each temptation with a quotation from Scripture. Now, now Satan is, is quoting Scripture as well, but Jesus' uh, use of Scripture is more in line with the, the, the Spirit. And that, that's an important aspect here, too. Jesus is modeling for us what it means to be led by the Spirit. He's led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He's led by the Spirit in his renunciation of the tempter's temptations. And at each point, Jesus does not succumb. Now, there's material needs here. He's hungry, but he doesn't succumb to that temptation. There is the doubt idea. And many of us are probably going through that now. Uh, Satan takes Jesus to the top of the temple in the second temptation and, and says, okay, if God's really with you, throw yourself out and, and let's see uh, God catch you and prove that he's really with you. Now, many of us are probably in that situation right now. Is God really with us with everything that's going on in the world? What may be going on with our families? Is God really with us? Um, 
Look at Jesus' response from Scripture. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. He will see us through. And indeed, he sees the Lord through. And of course, there's that final temptation where Satan takes Jesus to the top of the mountain, shows him the entire world and says, you want to be king? It can all be yours. I can make it happen. I can make it happen quicker and easier than, than what God intends for you. And this is all certainly true. Um, but Jesus is adamant in his allegiance to his Father in heaven. And this is the example for us. Um, whatever temptations come our way, it is the Lord that we need to rely on. Um, it's not always the easiest way. Usually it's not. But it is the way that, that, that truly leads to, to, to greater life and, and eternal life. So we've taken a look at a good bit of background information about Matthew chapter 4 and, and Jesus is dealing with Satan as he is being attacked. But, uh, you know, for all of that, let's not lose focus of really probably what the main takeaway is for us as followers of Christ. Jesus uh, was tempted and, and he was in tough situations too. There he is in the desert. He's hungry. He's tired. He's probably cranky. I mean, I, I think we all can identify certainly with being cranky and being under stress lately. And, and where was his solace? His solace was in knowing Scripture. Um, that, that, that's part of why we're doing this this month. We're, we're, we're going to open up God's Word. We're going to do it on a regular basis, and we're going to be filled with, with His Word. And so when attack comes, when, when we're depressed in the middle of the night, when we wonder, is God really in control? When, when all of these things happen, we will be able to reflect back on passages of Scripture, including the one we've just looked at, and say, yes, Jesus tells us that God is in control. Jesus is, in fact, in control, and we will get through this time of tempting. Anyway, keep reading Matthew, and I will see you again uh, via this format sometime next week.